couple years ago, my oldest child got uh, this uh, mushroom growing kit for Christmas, and he I, he seemed interested. He watched a bunch of videos about it, so uh, we thought, all right, we're going to eat some delicious pearl oyster mushrooms, but he never grew it. So I thought this new YouTube channel would be a perfect opportunity to uh, grow this mushroom kit. Uh, we bought this at Toll Foods. Let's see what it looks like inside. It's a little tray or something. And a little spritzer bottle. And a bag of coffee grounds that has been infected with some pearl oyster mycelium or spore or whatever and look at all that mycelium in there. So we're going to grow this and uh, see how many mushrooms we can get out of them and see how tasty they are. Because I've had pearl oyster mushrooms before but the ones I had were grown off of straw and cow manure in an old bathtub in the backyard when I was a child. Okay, so there's my pearl oyster mushrooms that are about to start growing. Uh, let's see, let's read the instruction box. Place your box in an indoor area that has access to fresh air and avoids direct sunlight, e.g. next to a slightly open kitchen window. I think this works out pretty good. Window to the left. Uh, let's see, on the box's front mushroom cutout, make vertical and horizontal slits. Well, we're not going to leave the box on there because I don't want to get flagged for having somebody's trademark stuff on here. Alright, use the mister to apply two to four sprays of tap water around the slits twice a day. Here's the mister. Right here. Just fill it up with tap water. Harvest your oysters by gra harvest your oyster mushrooms by grabbing the base of the mushroom and twisting off when the caps are one to two inches in diameter. See. After seven to ten days, you will see small grayish blue pinheads appear. These are your baby mushrooms beginning to form. Watch how quickly they grow, sometimes doubling in size each day. Even if you miss a watering session, your babies will still grow. However, they may just take an extra week or so to form. Continue misting regularly and increase amounts only if mushrooms begin to look dry, i.e., obviously, browning occurs on the stems and caps. Uh, num and directions number four, harvest your oyster mushrooms. Okay, we just read that. Uh, number five, for your second crop, remove the, the packaging back and repeat the steps above. Well, we're not using the packaging, so we're going to go ahead and do some slits all over this beast, yeah? Alright, so it said I could mist them with regular tap water on the direction since I was just doing a perforation on the front, but since I'm doing the pokes all the way around, I'm going to go ahead and give it a lot of water, get it nice and wet, not too wet. You want to definitely see a little bit of water going into these little holes I just made, that's for sure. Coming along nicely. Uh, as you can tell, the mycelium is pretty much taking over most of the lower half of the bag. I haven't uh, misted it yet at all today. Here's the side we're doing without all the plastic on it. And there are some dots where some mushrooms are starting to pop up in there. Yeah, that's what we like. Now well, there's a micro update on the mushrooms. Keep them misted. I'm going to go get my uh, Mr. Bottle filled. I've misted it every day, a couple times a day. 
for about two weeks now. And as you can tell, the mycelium is totally starting to take over, especially where I left the plastic on the bag. Where the plastic's on the bag next to the holes, it's starting to take over. Right there. And I got a little bit of fresh water in the bottom of the tray. I put some holes in the bottom of the bag and put a little fresh water in there to keep it kind of wet. If I just happen to not be here, <coughs> yeah, the whole thing's totally turning white now. Um, I wish I could show you under the little dome here, but I got some little white mountains under the dome here. It's starting to look like mushrooms. I don't want to take the dome off and ruin anything. <coughs> It's all, it's all turning white. The mycelium is, is growing. Pearl oyster mushroom cultivation. Looks like it might have started. So we're just going to keep our eyes peeled. We're going to start seeing a mushroom come out of here maybe. Or out of right there. Some gray right there. I don't know. There could be mushrooms going off of this thing anywhere. mushroom action going on in here. Right down in there. So I can get some fruiting bodies. Not sure. This is the part that was under the dome. Uh, we just moved uh, this from one house to another. So hopefully everything will continue on as it's going. The mycelium's practically covered the whole thing through the middle. Delicious they are going to be, I hope. So I'm gonna give you a close up. So we got some, it was over here, came over here to mist the mushrooms and I just noticed that we have some mushroom activity right here. Look at that. There is the start of some mushrooms. Maybe they'll be ready in time for Christmas. I would have thought they would have done it on the other side first, but no, that's, that's where they came up. Right there. I thought they would have started under the cap here, but no. Not on that side yet. They definitely start on this side first. So I think I'm going to clear away some of this plastic and get some pictures. came in here to mist it this morning. The mushrooms that were growing on there getting a little dry. So we misted it all and we're missing the whole thing and we noticed over here, boom, on the side under the plastic that there's some more coming out. So I'm thinking we're going to go ahead and trim this plastic back here. My 
really dull scissors. Over here, too, but no mushrooms as of yet. And I look right here, there's one going on right there. I see something here. So, yeah, I think next time we won't follow directions on this package and we're gonna go ahead and remove all the plastic and put it in a terrarium. I think we'll get much better results. Since they were, were fighting them being dry, I just figured I would make a miniature terrarium really quick. Uh, so just I got this old cheese puff container and cut the top off and sterilized it and put some vents in it. And uh, we'll put that on there and mist it and see how the mushrooms do. And this where we'll get up here that we got going on. So we'll see. We'll see how the cheese puff terrarium helps the mushrooms not be so dried out. Like uh, these that started to grow right here, started to get all dried out. And we got these new ones over here under the plastic. So hopefully we'll see. Hoping they'll be ready for Christmas. Love to chop these mushrooms up now into some stuffing or something. So yeah, it was a little dry. We were fighting the dry, so we tried we're gonna try this terrarium. Alright, a little update on the mushrooms. Um, we got several little spots on here that I'm starting to get some fruit. Um I went ahead and decided to go ahead and cut the bag off the top of it, which was my initial instinct on previous mushroom grows. It was easier to just take it out of the bag. So we went ahead and did that, and we're getting some some new action here, uh, some new action down there. See, new action, new action, new action. So there was the first one. It dried a little bit. There's the second one. It's doing much, much better. So, we just got our little plastic dome and just keep misting it. And uh, I guess the next batch will be more prepared for it. Yeah, so I wanted to show you. And all my other plants. They're doing pretty good from the move. Ones I've decided to keep, anyways, the peppers and the salvia fedorum here. So yes, the dome definitely helped quite a bit. there. It's getting a little dry now. Didn't do so good. They dried out. But everybody else is doing really nice. Put the dome on it. So I think the next time we grow mushrooms, we're just going to build ourselves a mushroom growing container. Okay, it's Christmas afternoon. Mushroom farm. See, they got a little hot and dry. That side, but this side sprouted some mushrooms too, and I clipped one of them 
taking this lid off. There's a little mushrooms growing on there. There need to be some more air. That smells nice. Pearl oyster mushrooms grown at home kit on coffee grounds. <coughs> Look at that. Very cool. Oh yeah, it just happened all over. You know, I haven't eaten any of these yet. And the reason being is I thought they were going to get a little bit bigger than this. So I figured I'll just go ahead and let this thing grow out. I believe the problem is, is the humidity at my house is just too dry. It's much, much too dry here. So we'll have to build a special mushroom grow box or grow these outside on the patio next time. But as you can tell, they're definitely going there and there. And here's the old ones. They're a little undried outside. Like I said, it gets really hot here with the heater the way it's all set up. So, you know, I just have to get used to this new place. And then I got a whole bunch starting down here. And there's a whole bunch of mushrooms, 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 mushrooms. And there's some more right there. And on this side over here, yep, see that? There we go. And there we go. All over the place. So I would think this is a success for growing for a first time, considering this has been sitting in the closet for two years. But uh, food-wise, I think we would have to do some more practice and possibly build them a container or grow outside where the humidity is a little bit higher and it's a little cooler. Let me get some micro shots for you guys. So, a couple more days. Today is January 1st, 2012, and look at these giant mushrooms that just grew out here. These things are freaking monsters. Look at them. And they smell really mushroomy, too. And look what happened over here on this side. It just went to town. Went to town. So, well, I guess the block is starting to climatize. We've been missing it. Our little mister bottle here. Yeah, I barely got the little dome off of it that I have been keeping on it. On the old cheese puff ball thing. So, that's the update on the pearl oyster mushrooms. Pretty cool. I wanted to show you guys that. Thought I'd get a real quick one before I went to bed. Man, these things are huge. Huge going to town. Especially these. Very big. Very chunky. Very cool. I'll have to do some stir fry or something if they look at it good enough to eat. Very cool. Use my finger for a reference how big they are. I'm a big guy, so pretty big for pearl oyster, pearl oyster mushrooms, I would say. Pretty cool.
So it, it brooded a couple times. Uh, we had a few of them. Most of them we just let them go to town, do their natural thing. As you can see, these are starting to liquefy. Um, another mushroom coming in right there. Yeah, like I said, we just let them do their natural thing, and all the liquid that comes off, you know, because uh, you know I give it a little bit of water every once in a while on the bottom of the tray, and this thing just soaks it up like a wick. So I've been able to grow quite a few mushrooms off of it. Well, anyways, when the water down here gets really mushroomy with a lot of spawn, I'll, I've been dumping it into the pot over here with my salvia vidorum, hoping to inoculate the uh, base of this. Uh, this plant's get starting to get a little out of control, so I was going to take some cuttings and hopefully inoculate this uh, soil in here with these pearl oyster mushrooms spawn and then transfer that one outside into a bigger bin. But yeah, yeah, for fun, this has been very fun to do, considering this thing sat in my son's closet for two years. Lots of interesting stuff. See all the mushrooms dying now? It still has a nice, pleasant, mushroomy smell to it. Just cleaned the area here and, and uh, put new water in the pan. You see the color, the coffee color. I'm assuming there's quite a bit of spawn in there as well. We've been dumping that into this pot over here, like I just said, with this salvia fedorum plant, which is, where I live is totally legal. Some places it's not. So I just wanted to give you a little update on that before the whole mushroom thing inside with this little packet is ended, because we're pretty much reached the climax of it, pretty much. Um, you know, like I said, we had a couple blooms on it. And I think it's pretty much done. So maybe we'll chop it up and put it in the compost for my little patio garden I'm getting ready to build. And maybe one day soon I'll have more mushrooms growing out of it. <laughs> Who knows? But this has been quite fun and interesting. Little uh, sideline little thing I've done here with these mushrooms. And I look forward to doing them again but maybe a different variety or on a larger scale or even better outdoors mm, from moving from my old house to here it's gotten all kinds of stresses and it's quite hot here not very humid so a lot of the mushrooms died before they even got anywhere all right so I think uh, my brick of coffee grounds that have been inoculated with pearl oyster mushrooms is just about done. Um, I really don't think there's any more food in the brick, but the mushrooms are growing on top of the old dead mushrooms. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So I wanted to show you that before uh, we chopped this up and poured it into our patio garden. So yeah, mushrooms, new ones growing on top of the old ones that we didn't pick. This one, it's just huge. It's just putting spores out all over. See all the spores and the liquid in the bottom? Oh yeah, we're gonna pour that into our garden. I just thought I'd share this with you before it was done. I just thought that was the sweetest thing. Let's get some micro shots. <laughs> 